Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another late night here on the East Coast. How y'all doing? Well, 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 well. Tex Murphy! The Pandora Directive, actually. Um, anyone that remembers, what was it, two years ago? Maybe I streamed Under a Killing Moon? Uh, which was absolutely incredible. Fan-fucking-tastic. Or was it, was it three years ago? Two or three. Anyway. Um... Y'all should know I'm I'm a big fan of adventure games. Point and click, any click, left, right, you know, click, <laughs> WASD, I don't really care. I, I love adventure games. I love a really good story. And I have a, you know, obviously I have that little soft spot in my heart for shitty, like shitty games with a lot of heart. Uh, it's one of my favorite things about going out of my way to, to find new and obscure uh, bad movies. Because... While a bad movie made by a Hollywood executive is awful, um, there there is a lot of real joy in watching a bad movie made by someone who really is putting in care. Um, and one thing that always ends up compounding my interest and and in turning shit into gold, even if it's it's already like shitty gold, like just super gold is FMV, which uh, back in the day stood for full motion video. Uh, we don't really use it so much anymore because we have proper graphics, but back in the day you had two options, well three. You would have a still image, or you would have um, maybe like some pixelated characters, sort of with, with synthesized voice, stuff like that. But full motion video was the idea of recording uh, people in glorious, I mean at the time I believe it was 480p, condensing it down to um, like 110p. And throwing it on a CD. Uh, CNC did have FMV. Yep. Um, sort of the, the, the big boy names in the field. You had Command and Conquer. Uh, was well known for it. You had uh, the Wing Commander series. Which was well known for it. And um, I think kind of those, those were the, the big FMV games. That people actually sort of knew about. And went oh okay this is a thing. You can have a movie in your game. Um, but there were others, there were a lot of others, and um, you don't have to know the first three games to understand this one. MechWarrior 4, I don't remember FMV, no, I never played MechWarrior 4, sorry, I played 2. Uh, so that's, I mean, that would be why. Uh, so I never heard anyone talk about that, because I didn't, I didn't know any MechWarrior fans. Um, but Tex Murphy is an amazing series, from humble beginnings. It, it, the first two games are point-and-click adventures with a lot of weird little mechanics um, but it's all sort of your standard pixel based 2d go around and um they're good but they're hard to play through and i played like i said tex murphy 3 which is under a killing moon on um steam a few years ago it's absolutely incredible um I, I do highly recommend, though, like, check out... I mean, you can check out anyone's playthrough, but I, I have the old VODs if you want to sit down and watch those uh, at some point, if you like this. You don't need to watch it now. You're, you're not missing out on the story. I'll fill you in everything you need to know. Tex Murphy is a schlub detective. Uh, and, and going off the top of my head here, uh, it takes place in San Francisco, post-World War III. Uh, the world is is just a pile of garbage. It's filled with mutants, but there are some non-mutants out there, and they're huge assholes to the mutants. But Tex Murphy isn't rich enough. Uh, he's he's a non-mutant, but he's not rich enough to live in non-mutant society. So he he lives in the schlubs, uh, playing space detective, and he's the bumbling idiot. What about dirty commie mutant terrators? Oh man, uh, pretty much all mutants are dirty. <laughs> Commies potentially, and traitors, well, there's some shit. Um, but we'll see. I'm, I'm going to... This is DOSBox. If anyone remembers the days when I streamed a lot of DOSBox games. The audio is fuck all over the place. Uh, and usually deafening. So uh, now I'm, I'm better at what I do, so I'm able to lower the volume somewhat. Let me know if it is too loud. But it is important you hear the audio to this game because Tex Murphy's voice acting is incre just incredible. Uh, I forget the, the actor who plays Tex Murphy, but I love him. But here we go. We're going to hit play. We're going to have... Uh, oh, sorry. We'll, we'll watch the intro. We're going to have a lengthy intro movie. 
And um, Tex Murphy 3 under a Killing Moon actually did well um, for a video game. And they ended up to getting a couple big name actors maybe in this. You might see them. Okay, it's not Mark Hamill in Wing Commander. Um, but, you know, hey. Let's, get, let's give it a minute. Let's see what happens. Oh, and the first game was narrated by James Earl Jones. Uh, well, the third game, but still. Either way, I'll be quiet. Sorry. Enjoy. Enjoy. Oh, and how's the audio? Because uh, I want it to be loud when you hear them talking. Jones is Tex Murphy. I think he's the actor who plays him. He's one of the original developers for the game. And uh, he, he just played the part so well when looking for other people that they ended up sticking with it. Sorry. Oh, and think of any shitty film noir detective. That's, that's what Tex is. But more bumbling and shittier. I mean, you gotta respect this guy for how shit he is and what he's doing. Uh, can you hear him rustling? <laughs> Fuck it! <laughs> There's a lot of gags in this. I love Tex Murphy. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, now that was really quiet. Should be the woo. Should be a little louder. I'll, I'll turn it up a titch just for the intro, just in case. I was just thinking you don't look a day over 25. Liar. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've just been feeling very stuck lately. Uh, you know, I cannot remember the last time I was surprised by anything. Can you? The last time I was surprised was by you. Well, you know what I mean. I mean, I'm just surprised that we're able to stay good friends. I've been thinking about moving. Maybe Phoenix. Phoenix. 
I've got an old college friend that lives down there, and she says it's nice. I think the change would do me good. What do you think? Yeah, I think you'll love it down there, because they're square dancing and ten-gallon hats and armadillo hunting. And macho yokels with names like Tex. So tell me, what do you think? You think I should go or not? Well, you know, Arizona may seem like a much more exciting place than San Francisco, but it's dangerous down there. At least around here, you got your friends checking out for you. It's dangerous everywhere. I mean, especially here. I mean, did you hear about that co-ed? Someone murdered her in her own bedroom. I didn't hear about that. Who killed her? Well, the newspaper said it might be a serial killer. They gave him some kind of crazy name. I don't know, I, I can't remember what they called him. Well, doesn't that stuff scare you? I mean, I'm a tough guy and it scares me. I appreciate your concern, Tex, but I have been fine on my own for a long time. need to quickly interject. This is his ex-wife. So, you know, he was really Looks broken like up without her. Like I'm going home. Got a big date? Oh, yeah. Cary Grant and a pint of haagen -Dazs. Hold me down. See you later. What a schmuck. What? Chelsea was giving you opportunities all evening and you blew every one of them. The son P.I. you are. Who you wouldn't know a clue if it walked up and punched you in the face. Listen, all I know is, every time I try and ask her out, she turns me down. It's from the distinguished gentleman in the corner. He bought me a drink. He bought you a bourbon. Oh, Tex getting lucky tonight. Good evening. Gordon Fitzpatrick is my name. Please sit down, sir. You know, I am not in the habit of eavesdropping, but I do believe I heard someone say that you were a private detective. That's right. I'm a licensed private investigator. Oh, delightful. It's a pleasure indeed to meet you. And your name? Murphy. Tex Murphy. Tex Murphy. Well, 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 this is fine. Now listen, let me ask you this, Mr. Tex Murphy. Have you in your work ever had the occasion to seek for a missing person? Sure. I can do that. Well, then perhaps we could do some business. I think we can work something out. My office is just around the corner, the Ritz Hotel. Why don't we go there? Oh, I love their fucking green screen effects. I love it. <laughs> I like your office. Oh, yes, the ambiance is very authentic. Reminds me of those, uh, you know, those old detective stories that I used to watch when I was a kid. I'm sure that at any moment, Sam Spade is going to come marching through that door, but then who needs Sam Spade when I've got Tex Murphy standing in front of me? Did you always want to be a private eye? As far back as I can remember. Mm -hmm. You have a seat, Mr. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. While all the other kids were logged on to Sesame Street Interactive, I was reading Hammett and Chandler. It must be quite an exciting life. Oh, it's got its moments. Don't get me wrong, it's not like the movies. It sure as hell doesn't pay very well. But it suits me. 
So what can I do for you, Mr. Fitzpatrick? Well, I'm trying to find an old acquaintance of mine, Thomas Malloy, Dr. Thomas Malloy. The last official address for him that I have is the Ritz Hotel. Now, do you happen to know him? Can't say that I do. That's very important that I find him. You know, let me give you a little background. For many years, I was a research scientist and I worked alongside Dr. Malloy. But about 20 years ago, maybe, I guess something like that, our paths diverged and I lost touch with him, and he with me. And then very recently, I saw a photograph of him in a local newspaper. Now, it's a strange thing how time is such a natural equalizer, makes us appreciate the faces from one's past. At any rate, the older gentleman in that photograph is Dr. Malloy. And I contacted the newspaper to find out where the photograph had been taken. It was at the San Francisco Technical University. Well, I hiked right out there, got to the campus, and decided to look the man up and surprise him. Even with that photograph, no one recognized him. No one knew his name. But then I received a strange phone call from a young woman named Sandra. The man I knew as Thomas Malloy, she knew as Tyson Matthews. She seemed quite uncomfortable talking on the vid phone, so I suggested we meet. She never showed up for that appointment. You never heard from her again? You know, it's strange. But this simple, whimsical wish of mine to get together with my old friend has materialized into, I don't know, I feel a sense of impending doom. I fear for the young woman, and I fear for my friend, Dr. Malloy. It sounds interesting. I think I can look into this for you. Thank you. Now, you'll have to refresh my memory. How much... How much is your fee? How does it work? I charge $500 a day. Of course. Plus expenses. Naturally. There, that should be enough to get you started. And here, here somewhere, there you go. I can be reached at that number. I'll be in touch. I feel we're off to a good start. All right, Mr. Fitzpatrick. This is the first cash I've had in months. Four grand. I owe Louie 200 bucks, and Rook says I owe him 300. But there should be plenty left over. Yes, sir. Things are definitely looking up. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love Tex. He's the perfect schlub. What do you think? <laughs> now, I hope if I push New Game here, it doesn't start the intro over. Or, or crap out. Okay, it crapped out. So, uh, what that means... It's because I had to alt tab the game here. There, fixed it. Do you wish to play the entertainment level or the game players level? Hmm. We recommend that everyone except experienced game players select the entertainment level the first time through. There are hints available on this level as well as the option to bypass the more difficult puzzles. Refer to the hidden system. Yeah, this is a point-based game. We're doing entertainment. I'm going to tell you why. Um, if you've ever seen, you thought I was voicing text. Oh my god! If if I honestly, I like, it would be a dream to be Tex Murphy. <laughs> but unfortunately, I uh, you know, not, I'm not quite there. I'm not I'm not quite schlubby enough. I'm working on it. Um, but th the thing is, all adventure games have like the bullshit puzzles. Tex Murphy is not just filled with bullshit puzzles, but bullshit logic. Like, oh, of course, uh, to find this clue, I was supposed to 
first go through this guy's garbage, but that that's not related. But because I've gone through that garbage, the Mole Man spawns. Now I can talk to the Mole Man, and the Mole Man will tell me about something completely unrelated that takes me something completely, and then I can finally like learn something, which is okay. But uh, having a hint system is nice. I won't skip any puzzles because fuck that. But you're a true gamer. Oh. <laughs> I know, I don't think you know what this means. This means we will be Googling the walkthrough in about an hour. <laughs> no, it's not that bad, but occasionally it does have puzzles where uh, you, you just go, what the fuck? The story can move along three different paths to a total of seven combined endings. Pretty cool. Um, Under a Killing Moon, I believe, just had one. To play, Mission Street. Be thoughtful, kind, and choose... Oh, I, th I think it's telling us what the endings are. Mission Street, be thoughtful, kind, choose the high road. Lombard Street, stay neutral and perhaps a little naive in the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Be antagonistic and selfish. Uh, that This isn't Tex at all, so we won't be doing that. Tex is thoughtful, kind, but very naive. So we'll be, we'll be moving somewhere between these two. So Tex is like a heart of gold, but he's very, very... Uh, uh, naive. <laughs> Walk these lonely streets. A tutorial of how to use the virtual world engine is available in the help system. Hmm. Uh, the two characters we saw at the bar there, it's actually a diner. It's Moe's Diner, I believe. Something like that. Um, but the, the two mutants at the the de or the or bar um, were from the, the third game as well, and we're going to be seeing them a lot, I, I think. But they're... Just know they're recurring. Oh, shit. I think I, I decked it up. I didn't realize the intro would play when you started. Which, of course, it would. Oh, nice. Oh, I love games that let you do this. Here we go. Parfait. De Vun. The Search for Malloy. Now, this is DOSBox. Problems will arise. Uh, always keep me posted if the audio gets nuts. And number two, the game might just start lagging. We're going to have to close the whole game and open it back up because DOSBox has an aneurysm sometimes. And yes, the whole game is going to have just... Patrick FMV. didn't give me much to go on. Just the newspaper photo of Malloy and the fact that Malloy stayed here at the Ritz. And there's that girl Fitzpatrick referred to, Sandra. Maybe I can track her down. First, I need to find out which apartment Malloy was staying in and then get into it. That means I gotta deal with Nilo, my landlord. It's the second week of April, and I'm a little late on my February rent payment. <laughs> Fuck. I, like, I just love the little lines. Now, contrary to what you might think, this game isn't a point and click. It's a, it's a walk around and move. Well, that won't work. So, you, you do this. And, oh, Christ. I forgot. Okay, it's all mouse movement, by the way. I have no control over that. We will have to turn the sensitivity down for this at some point, because Christ in hell. Uh, config, please. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Where's my mouse sensitivity? Low. Uh, speed walking, slow. Captioning on. Perfect. Rendering quality? Not sure. Let's try putting this on high. <laughs> Sound Blaster 16, yeah boy. Oh, well this is more manageable. Yeah, I, I think this is probably fine. So I know what you're thinking. Lewd pick. Oh. Très bon. Um, so I know what you're thinking. Well, th this looks like it controls like ass. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the games I like do. Uh, this one is so much ass, it controls only with the mouse. I'll let you think about that. So, Rafa, how do you move forward and backwards? You move the mouse forward and backwards while you're trying to aim? Yeah. Yep. Yep, that's what we're in for. Anyway, let's look around. And this is how you interact with the whole game, by the way. So let's look at Texas apartment. 
I'll pick up these clothes next time I'm expecting someone else in my bedroom. Yeah, fat chance of that. It's like worse than tank controls. But yeah, you like I have to keep pushing forward to move forward and backwards and yeah. My parents found this in the attic and sent it to me. I remember the pastoral days of my early youth riding on my trusty Mount Striper chasing bank robbers and horse thieves. And all that came to an end one summer afternoon during an electrical storm. The lightning struck a transformer near our home, creating a tremendous power surge. It was after the accident that my brothers and sisters started calling me Tex. Whenever I asked them, they'd just laugh and wink at each other. I never did find out about that nickname. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you don't have a zebra to ride in your bedroom? Come on, boy. Oh, let's look at these, too. So Fitzpatrick's staying at the Savoy. Guess I can call him on my vid phone if I need to talk with him. So I, you know, you might might have noticed I fucking love things that are voice acted. If you can voice act the whole game for me, I, I love you forever. Uh, my trusty electronic shop credit card. The only way to go when you're out of cash. Delicious dollar bills. Nice. All right. So if I hadn't have examined, even though it was in my inventory, if I didn't examine his card, I never would have had his room number. It wouldn't have told me how to call him. Like, you know what I mean? Space girl Doris. With your own form-fitting air suit and come-hither smile, I still dream of you and a lunar landing. It's my own little attempt at creative horticulture. Oh, you think our cash is getting stolen soon? You're probably right, Dino. Yeah, the Tex never gets to hang on to anything. Uh, the In the third game, he's like, well, at least I still have my gun or something. He's like flipping it around, just drops it out of his fucking apartment. And uh, yeah, gone. These are designer lights, as if there were any doubt. Some kid steals it. Uh, this is some sort of cool thing. Oh, I think I think I fucked up. Hang on, we gotta lower lower this render quality. It's too high. It can't, it, it can't handle it. I'm currently reading the Maltese fruitcake. The family's been passing it around for years. I won this athletic supporter trophy in high school. I was the best third string punter in the state. I think that's a ceramic dog. A small miniature camel. I love how it's filled with like the shittiest. Oh no, we have to turn the render up. I moved too fast without it. it like the game just filled with the shittiest 3D art too. Oh, that's my yeah. Okay. This is where I keep the elixirs and potions that help me maintain my boyish good looks. That doesn't seem to do anything. Shut up, Tex. This is where I keep the. Okay. This is where I keep yeah, the... Yeah, I, I know that. Doesn't look like there's anything in these. Oh my... Uh... Hmm. Oh, I just learned a new a new key command. Tex. Well... Shut up, Tex. Goddamn fool. This is... Alright, whatever. These are designer... Alright. Uh, so... Let's talk about the controls. Uh, w does this. A looks a little to the left. D looks at the floor. I think W is looking right. Isn't it? Or is that behind me? W looks right. A looks a little left. S looks a little right. Okay. What, Q? Q does something as well. Looks okay. Ugh. This picture, Fox? It's, uh... Space Girl Loris, or... or whatever. Some, some beautiful space woman. <laughs> Controls, boys. Oh, did I mention this game has hidden pixels that you have to find? 
like like a key that will be one pixel in the room and it's somewhere on the floor? Yes. Yeah, we got stuck in that in Tex Murphy 3 under a killing moon. Because uh, there's a key that's hidden in a drain pipe at one point. So, like I said, that's why we that's why we have the hint system in case we need it. Indoor plumbing is one of the many luxuries I try not to take for granted. This is where I shave my face once a month, come rain or shine. What's this? Ah, soap on a rope. Grandpa Murphy buys this for all the grandkids every Christmas. <laughs> oh, you know the old the old soap on a rope. This is the certificate and a copy of the check the Mutant League gave me after my last case. I used the cash to expand my office, buy some furniture, and pay off my debts. That left me with $4.12. Oh, nice. He text Murphy for his outstanding investigative talents and tremendous efforts on behalf of the mutants. We wish to extend this token of our deepest... Why is it Tolkien? This Tolkien of our deepest artificial heartfelt thanks. League of Mutants. Yeah, because in the last game, uh, space Nazis were trying to build a lunar base and then nuke all the mutants left on the planet. So, can I look down and then, yeah. I'll pick up these clothes next time I'm expecting someone else in my bedroom. Yeah, fat chance of that. Oh, oh, now I'm stuck looking at the floor. Oh, fuck! How do, how do I not look at the floor? There's got to be a way. Oh, okay. I, I can use the arrow keys. No, I can't. I can use up and down arrow to look up and down, but left and right do nothing. The controls! They do nothing! <laughs> also, I should mention that Tex is in a state of perpetual motion. He's essentially wheelchair bound. And if I don't constantly push him back and forth, I can't get him to a full stop. Yeah. <laughs> The guy who sold me this Hormonatron said it would make women obsolete in my life. But I can't get it to work. Oh, dear God. Let's keep far away from that thing. What happened to this uh, hole in the wall? All right, let's try this door. This door connects to my rec room. Oh. So last time his office and bedroom were one room. So we have, we have expanded. This door... So guess how you walk through the door. Do you do this? Not even joking. <laughs> oh, this music. It's beautiful. Let's go look at the... the oh, you fucking Christ. Let's go look at the... Uh, the what, what's that called? The, the fucking skybox. It's another beautiful night in the city I love. Uh, yeah, he, he loves this schlub city. Which I've, I've honestly... I have this huge appreciation for schlub, schlubs now. You know, you just you start living in it, and it's it's kind of it's kind of nice. It's kind of freeing. I call this painting bleak landscape. Nice, nice. Also, um, I have tomorrow off work, so we can keep going for a little, which is nice. The reason I have tomorrow off work is because I still have my migraine, and I, I did work my full shift, but I spent the whole shift unable to see at one eye, and like slurring my words and having good times. So. It's gone down a little bit. I'm hoping it's gone tomorrow, um, but it was really bad yesterday. So. If you have a migraine for three days, you're supposed to like go to the hospital in case of brain damage or something. So, a handful of Agatha Christie novels and my secret Aladdin lamp. Mm. I'm not planning on dusting that baby until I'm ready to retire. This is just a bunch of stuff. A stack of Perry Mason paperbacks and some other crap. I mean art. A handful of Agatha Christie. Okay, well, thanks, Tex. Let's look at this little picture. This photo was taken at the last family reunion I attended. God, has it really been 18 years? It has. This painting epitomizes my view of women as a gender. <laughs> okay. Uh, hang on. I need to. I need to understand Tex's. Oh God! Stop sliding around, Tex. Beautiful. That's a wonderful little family reunion. Little little baby Tex. No matter how many lights I have in a room, there's always space for another lamp. Oh, fuck off. That's the worst. Oh my god, we have a proper record. What is this tiny little door? 
That's not intentional wainscoting. Oh, it is. Ew, what the fuck? Who doesn't continue it? That's weird. I'm gonna start using this thing just as soon as I get in shape. Shh. Yeah, you, you made that joke. Good one. Uh, I, I'm a sucker for the heat. Whoa, I love this. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Bear in a trench coat. That's a great painting. I'd put that on my wall. This is a big photo of two horses. Why I have it, why it's actually hanging on my wall, I have no idea. A reproduction of fish and fruit by the mutant surrealistic Saul Dooley. Hmm. I mean, that's a little bit of a jokes. This barbell would provide a great workout if it weren't so darn heavy. Right. Most of these computer components were purchased at a yard sale. The only one I've been able to get running is the little laptop on the shelf in front of the chair. Oh, is this Crime Computer? The original game you have Crime Computer that I think you use like three times maybe? And it's pretty great. What are these shelves? You can never have too much shelf space. Most of these computer comp- uh -huh. I cut this article about Mac Malden out of the newspaper. <laughs> Gives me a good chuckle. Give me that. I cut this thing out of the paper a few days ago. I've known Mac Malden for years. We've worked together on several cases, but I don't know if we're actually friends. We just help each other out occasionally. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mac obviously hates Tex. That's, you know, Tex is a shitter. And Malden's an honest guy. This cop. door leads back to my boudoir. He's not a good one, but he's an honest one. This door leads downstairs. We're not ready to go downstairs yet. Hang on. Oh, okay. Let's check our clothes. Amazingly enough, this space-age cabinet came folded into a packet the size of a Trisket. It's not bad. Pretty handy. That's the way back to my office. That's where I want to go, Tex, you fuck. I didn't ask you to go in the rec room. Tex uh, likes to dance. This office was a dance studio before I moved in. Aww. Under a Killing Moon had a, a scene when you examined it. Uh, like Tex tried doing the salsa and then broke his back or some shit. This alien landscape reminds me of the old Star Trek episode where they get that distress call, then Captain Kirk meets that beautiful woman, then he and Spock barely escape, then Kirk makes that funny joke right at the end. I love that episode. <laughs> I love the wolf howling at Saturn. This is a breathtaking view of Saturn from the imaginary planet Alpha 19. That's actually fucking great. That's super funny. This is garbage. Nothing kills these plants, and I ought to know. This is the only pot I allow in my office. Not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. What else we got? <clears throat> We just, we need to expect all this so we know who Tex is. This painting always reminds me of something. I'm not sure what. I got this from my grandpa, Audie Murphy. It was signed by Richie Havens. Grandpa said he was the original singing detective. I haven't played my phonograph since it destroyed the A-side on my Bill Shatner Sings the Blues LP. I'm very choosy about what I keep in my hutch. The current selection shows off my sensitive, artistic side. <laughs> I love how it's like the same repeated shitty things over and over. The crime computer was awesome, though. Um, let you, like, type in all these, like, things you find out about suspects and narrow down people. This hot plate will come in handy if I eat anything other than saltines and dog food again. Ah, Taco Bob. It's got the most stylish placemats in town. The guy who sold me this said it just might be an unsigned Picasso. It better be, because I paid 30 bucks. Nice. What else we got here? 
Oh, hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry. I remember this being a problem. Couple more cases and I'll have this thing paid for. Then I'll start paying off my student loans. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Took me forever to get this diploma. I had to send in a hundred proofs of purchase from True Detective. Eat the rich dog food. A little gamey, but not bad for the price. I mean, I, I kind of love eat the rich dog food. That's great. I've had this jackknife ever since my wee blows days. Well, let's take that. Fuck yeah. My knife used to have all the cool attachments. Now everything's busted off except the pliers and the standard screwdriver head. <laughs> nice. Rusty the Clown's Fun Book. The only pop-up book in existence with a must-be 18 years or older sticker. I picked this book up at Rook's for a quarter. It's worth every penny. The scanner brings back some truly fond memories. I wonder how Trixie's doing. These drawers contain more worthless stuff than a Walmart bargain bin. Oof, shot, shot's fired, bud. That's where you find the best movies. These drawers contain more worth. Let's leave that open, because who cares? What's this thing on top, anyway? The 60-day warranty just ran out on my electronic shop fax machine. It should break down any minute now. Look at this beautiful cityscape, eh? This picture was taken of my ex-wife on her 25th birthday. Yeah, she was gorgeous. Makes me wonder sometimes why we couldn't make it work. And maybe that wasn't Texas' uh, ex-wife. Maybe it was just some other woman. I totally thought it was, because it looks like her, but it was just another blonde woman. I was going off old memory. Between my wedding ring and this picture of my ex-wife Sylvia, I will never, ever forget that women are alien creatures capable of great destruction. Did she just come back to you? Oh, that was his ex-wife. That's a New York Times bestseller, Men Are Imbeciles, Women Are Erratic. My mom sent this to help me with my love life. I've read the first chapter and I think the author's a hermaphrodite. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, chasing the dragon, yeah, yeah. When you start having hallucinations after eating eat the rich dog food. I mean, that's uh that's what happened. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> you gotta you gotta huff the paint and then eat the dog food. My new vid phone is essential to my business. Thank goodness it's easy to operate. One of these days, I'm gonna realize my dream of opening a spelunking shop in the Utah desert. Guilty as heck. The gripping saga of Lance Knight. The soft-boiled P.I. Yeah, it was cat food, yeah, we got Ritual virility is a guide to scoring with women. Step number one, get rich. I borrowed this magazine on my last trip to the dentist. I've always been crazy for the Miracle Nails model. Um, okay, so I've never played this one. But I have, I've played Tex Murphy 1, 2, and 3. Um, but yeah, but I think there's two more after this as well. Enter phone number now, please. Gordon Fitzpatrick. Let's give him a call, say we don't have anything yet. Hello, Mr. Murphy. How are your efforts progressing? I have a few leads. Call to see if you give me some additional information. I'll be happy to tell you anything I know. Oh, I love this guy. <laughs> uh, also, I miss James Earl Jones being the big voice actor. Like, James Earl Jones in Tex Murphy 3 basically plays God, or something very similar, and it's amazing. He voice acts everything. <laughs> Every time you die, he's like, really, Tex? <laughs> I'll bring you back. Uh, so, ooh, we got lots we can ask about. Uh, who's Thomas Malloy? As I've said, I haven't seen my friend for years, and I don't believe... I have any additional information that would help you locate him. So what do we think? Do we think this guy bumped off 
the girl hmm, that doesn't really make sense. I think this guy wants something that he knows Malloy has. Like I don't think this is a, a friendly game they're playing. Um so I you know, I think we're tracking him for the wrong reasons, but I'm not convinced he's he's caught up in, in the murders. The name is new to me. That may have been the girl that I spoke to at the university. Well, that's, that's what you said. As I've said, I haven't seen my friend for years, and I don't believe... All right. It's my idea that that was the pseudonym that Thomas used when he worked at the university. That's the landlord at the Ritz, if I'm not mistaken. Extremely unpleasant and uncooperative. Yeah. I love to. <laughs> it's... Uh... What was what text say? It's uh, oh, it's already the twelfth of April, and I'm behind on my February rent. Oh, that's such a great line. Well, my part in all this is relatively unimportant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a little questionable. I can't place the name. You don't know Rook? He's great. He owns the pawn shop. The man who runs the diner. Oh, I find Louis. him a very pleasant man. That's right, it's Louis Diners, not Moe's. Oh, man, Louis great. Hey, Tex. The name is new to me. If I'm any judge of character, I think our arrangement will be extremely beneficial. Yeah. All right, well. Interesting. Oh. See, I don't want to go through these, I really but I have to. Another can of Eat the Rich Dog Food. Well, at least I'll never starve. I really... Yeah, it's taken me years. All right, what's in these drawers, Tex? That's my Jane Mansfield coloring book and the Inspector Poirot mask I used last Halloween. Just a mustache? This thing sure beats my old... I really need to find some... I really... I really need... And what's in this one, though? These drawers are the holding area for stuff that's about to be tossed out in the trash. This thing sure beats my old desk. Eight cinder blocks and a half sheet of plywood. Nice. Took me three days of hard work to empty this drawer out. I really need... Yeah, See, that's why we shelf. did it! I can't believe they expect me to pay for the junk they sell. We knew we were going to have to open that shit. Notice to inform you this account is delinquent and must be paid immediately. If this payment is not received within three hours of this notice, it will be sent to the body parts collection agency for immediate action. Jesus! What? 1,230 fucking bucks! There's all our money, boys! Well, not all of it yet. But, uh. We still owe Louis like 300 and Rook or some shit. This baby's brand new. I had to replace the old one after the, uh, incident. Lord, what a horrible memory. Oh yeah, that's the entrance. This is my official front door. It leads to the fire escape. Nice. That's a classic. Hang on. This could be sketchy. Anything here? goes downstairs, right? This door. Check out the neighbors, shall we? So we know the, the guy we're looking for stays at this hotel. Or he did. The man in this painting looks vaguely like Nilo with a beard. This probably represents one of his twisted little fantasies. I don't remember Nilo from the first game. I'm not sure we dealt with him. But Rook and Louie we did for sure. And, uh... And the clown, which gave me nightmares as a child. I don't make a policy of getting to know my neighbors. The Ritz is the kind of place where people stay when they don't want to be found. Good place for business. Oh, that ain't blood, is it? That must be the outline of the last tenant who tried to skip out on his rent. <laughs> Okay. 
I'd run naked through a nuclear reactor core before I'd set foot in there. A gentleman of the old school like myself would never enter the Forbidden Zone. These security keypads have their own code. It'd be a nice safety feature if Nilo didn't have all the codes. All right. Oh, it auto looks down the stairs when you're, that's weird. Uh, I don't like that. I'm getting used to these controls, we're getting there. So it's, it's you know, like I said, it's been a this while. This door leads to the lobby. I only use it when I'm caught up on my rent. But we're about to be. Looks like Nilo's not at the front desk at the moment. Probably off somewhere reading one of his favorite magazines. I'm not gonna find out which room Malloy was staying in without talking to Nilo. This mail drop box adds a nostalgic touch to the lobby. Oh! Nilo hasn't had this vending machine stocked since I moved in. It'd probably cost money. Get it! Sheesh. This sandwich is about as fresh as Nilo's undershirt. Could've traded that to the mutants. They'll eat anything. They'll- oh, also, wow. Look how fast I move like this, because I'm not having to render the room. That's that's nauseating. Let's not do that. Be back shoe. Oh, is that a spitter? I'm not really sure what this painting means, but it's probably obscene. Oh, Nyla must have bought this sign. All the words are spelled correctly. Uh, I kind of want to hop behind the counter. Can we do that? Oh, look at all the mail. Front desk is a miracle of particle board and wood paneling. This is where most of the residents come to get their mail. I have mine delivered right to my office so Nilo doesn't get a chance to spill on it. Yeah, but I want to know. This piece of notebook paper looks like it's been used for a coaster. It looks like Nilo's in for a busy and productive day. The things to do. New issue of play, bub. Get it. I hope that's play bub and not play bib. Store. Pork rinds, pig feet, beer, pink fluffy cupcake things. Tea results at clinic. Renew play bub subscription. Fix camera in women's bathroom. And pay off babysitter. Fair. Yeah. That's good. Nilo must have found these magazines in the dumpster out back. The only magazines he pays for are the naughty ones. Nilo. Nilo. Sorry. What do we got? What kind of magazines are we looking for? Uh, some boring old magazines. Is this an ATM or some shit? The vid phone's busted, but Nilo won't put an out-of-order sign on it. That'd just cut into his profits. This door leads out to... This door... Well, I guess we leave, then. Nilo ain't here. I should probably stop by the newsstand and see if Chelsea's upset with me about last night. I've been trying to get her to go out with me for years now, and just when I think I might be getting somewhere, I stick my big foot in my mouth. Well, now I got some money, and maybe she'll give me another chance to let me take her out to dinner. Chelsea in the first game, or the third game, was super cute. Um, I hope it's the same actress. Hi, Tex. Looks like. Sounds like. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Here's the big part of the game. Dialogue. What do you do when you start talking to people? You save. Yep, that's fine. Um, fuck. You might say, what, what do you save, lobster? You don't know what any of these fucking mean. If I say attempt an apology, I don't know what Tex is going to say when he says that, but, but that's what we're going to try. We're going to be, we're going to attempt an apology here. 
Hey, I'm, you know, I'm sorry about last night. Is that so? Why? Yeah, why are we sorry? What happened last night? We don't know. I remember we went to the diner with some other woman. Um, orthopedic humor? I don't know if that's going to help. Try to get her to smile. Or turn the tables. <laughs> I don't think we should try and turn the tables. Um, let's try to get her to... No, let's go for the orthopedic humor. It's got to be bad, right? All right. You know... I feel like I swallowed my foot last night and left a bad taste in my mouth. That's metaphorically speaking, of course, because actually my feet smell pretty good. You really don't have to handle me with kid gloves, Tex. I know I'm getting older, and it's not like guys are lined up to take me out. Oh. We can console her, sort of. We could lay it on thick. We could humbly ask her out. She did say take off the kid gloves. Maybe we smack her on her ass and lay it on thick. Um. Let's go, uh, let's go with, uh. Let's, uh. I don't know, let's try laying on thick here, so yeah. Well, isn't it really more a matter of quality over quantity? <laughs> I mean, who needs a bunch of men around when you can have a love god like myself? <laughs> oh, fuck it, eh? Gee, Tex, sometimes you are so sexy. Let's change the subject before I get too excited. Oof, that hurt. Look, Tex, I'm sorry. I I'm just not feeling very friendly today. Is there something I can do for you? Um, you know, we tried. We tried. What all did you miss? Hey, Rudy. Uh, we've got hired to find. Um, well, what's what's a good way of putting this? Um, a g gentleman has hired us to find his long lost colleague or or friend, but it seems a little sketchy. So, but anyway, that's what we're off doing because we're Tex Murphy and we trust this guy, and he just gave us four thousand dollars, which might cover all our debts if we're lucky. Um. Let's do a sly invitation to dinner. Well, I got a bunch of cash, but I've got nothing to do with it. I figured I'd go out to dinner tonight, but I hate to eat alone. Are you interested? What? Like a date? Oh! Tex, you nailed it. We, we were trying to date her all up in the third game. I don't know if this will happen, mind you, but... <laughs> Plead shamelessly. I kind of like that. Uh, I feel like that's very, very Tex Murphy. <laughs> he's a he's a sad little schlub. Let's uh, describe a dream date though. If I know what Tex thinks about that. Well, sure, you know, dinner, a movie, maybe a trip up to my swinging bachelor pad for some strip bar cheesy. <laughs> Look, I know you're just trying to be nice. It's it's too late. Tex is gonna break down crying, hands and knees at this point. Because that's the thing. When I play these games, I try and get into the character. Right? I'm not gonna. Pick the choice I think works. I'm going to pick pick the Texiest choice. Uh, unless it's to solve the mystery, because Tex will fuck that up. Oh, come on. Go out with me. I'll even take a shower. I'm just not in the mood to go out. Uh, something happened. Let's find out. Let's do an innocent suggestion, maybe? See, see what this is. <sighs> no, it'd be more like two friends having a great meal. And maybe some stimulating conversation. I guess that'd be okay. I mean, yeah, that'd, that'd be all right. You know, Tex, I haven't really been myself lately, and I really appreciate you looking out for me. God damn it, Tex being friend-zoned again! Fuck! That's fine. Um, we should definitely add... Oh, setting a time is good. Because I feel like Tex won't do that if I don't say that. Um... I know if we say the favorite hotspot, it's definitely going to be Louie's. So let's see where she wants to go. Hey, this is going to be my pleasure. So what are you in the mood for? You know, I heard Weenie World put tater tots on the menu. Damn. I've got a better idea. Why don't you let me make you dinner at my place? It's cheaper than going out. And uh, besides, I have uh, something I'd like to talk to you about. Let's say, uh, 8 o'clock? Oh, fuck. Well, you've talked me into it, Miss Bear.
Either she's gonna rob oh, us or we're gonna die or something horrible. By the way, what should I bring? Red or white? You better be both. Finally. After years of relentless pursuit, Chelsea's inviting me over to her apartment for dinner. Oh man, the possibilities are making me woozy. Okay, snap out of it, Murphy, and let's get back to work here. Maybe I should head over to the Ritz and see if Nilo's at the front desk. I'm sure he'll be happy to see me. Yeah, the audio mixing. I don't know why that got so quiet. So the game's not giving us a lot of uh, freedom yet, but it will. And when it does, there'll be too much. Oh, God. Hold it right there, you sneaking piece of slop. I think we want to play it cool. Do you know what I mean? Because Tex feels like he's going to play it cool, but, like, Tex is shit at playing it cool. Let's try it. Calm down, Nilo. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Damn straight you ain't. Where's my money? You owe me three months back rent, pukehead. Come strolling in here like some kind of sunbeam from heaven. Cough it up. All right, let's cough it up. Should we? No, we should. We should pay our rent. Let's ooh, offer 500 bucks. Ooh, but I don't know how much we're going to need. Do you know what I mean? Because we know we need to spend... Oh, fuck. What was, what was our bill at the electronics store? Okay, so we need 1,230. We owe Louis... So let's just say we owe, like, 1,800. Yeah, we're okay. Let's offer... That doesn't uh, seem to do it. 500 bucks. I guess you don't count so good. You owe me 20... You want to see what happens if we just leave? Oh shit, you can just leave? Really? Nilo is undisputed proof that man evolved from apes. Pay up your rent, or you're out of here. Capiche? Capiche, you're... All right, let's just do it. <laughs> yeah, that's more like it. Ooh, uh, let's test his photographic memory. Well, now that we're all square, can you take a look at a photo for me? No comprendi. <laughs> the tourist. <laughs> we should compliment his language skills, yes. <laughs> no comprendi. Hey, I had no idea you were bilingual, El Nino. No one ever talks to me like that. Get the hell out of here, sicko. <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> Tex, why'd you have to drop the baby on him? All right. Nilo is on. Let's... What now, Pinhead? Oh my god, amazing! I, yeah, I just love everything about these character actors. Now maybe you can answer a few questions for me. No comprende? No oh fuck, he's gonna do it again. The tourist approach. I said I can use your help. I heard what you said. It's just my meter ran out. Of course, do you see no... A hundred bucks? Are you fucking... Oh, my God. What a scam artist. All right. So, what's on your mind? <sighs> okay. We need to ask about... Um, Thomas Malloy... No, Tyson Matthews, probably, right? Hmm. We only stayed here a couple of weeks. Paid up front for two months. But he's too late to get a refund. So you're going to charge me 100 bucks for each? Never heard of him. Okay, so that's, that's good. I ain't familiar with that name. Nope. Recognize the man in this photo? Yeah, I've seen him before. Hey, Tyson, what can man. you tell me about it? He used to stay here. I'm gone now. Which room did he stay in? Hey. 
What name did he use when he signed in? Matthews. Tyson Matthews. Okay. Well, thanks for the help. Oh, the pleasure was all mine. Pea brain. What are you asking about me for? You want to ask me out on a date? Uh, the way he's sucking on that cigar, maybe. I don't know. Never heard of him. You know Rook. Don't fucking lie to me. You know Rook. Ah, oh, nicest guy on the street. Me and him, we talk the same language. Yeah, Rook's kind of an asshole. And, and he's really into money. I'd like to wipe the smile off that fat guy's face. But he ain't a bad cook. And Louis's like the greatest guy. Why would you say that? <laughs> I got a few things I'd like to teach that, Chelsea. If you know what I mean. I know. What's he talking? Look, as long as you pay the rent, I don't care if you're the queen of freaking England. Sweet. Cool. Well, thanks, dude. Um... Apartment A is through the door by Nilo's desk and up the stairs. Nilo's had a hard time keeping tenants, so Malloy was probably the last person to stay in the room. Hopefully I'll find a lead once I get inside. Yeah, but we don't know the PS word. That's... Oh, fuck. I forgot about that. All right, thanks. Not... Wait. Oh. Hold the phone. The only thing in that storage closet is dust. I was like, wait a minute, there's two other doors here. The only thing... Okay, well, they're both storage closets, so... This... Up we go. Mm. These controls are the price we pay. Great gameplay. This is the first door I looked. So, this is where Malloy stayed. The beginning of the trail. We're gonna have to go out the fucking window or something. It's all locked up. Yeah, I know. What a scumbag. Nilo knew I couldn't get into the apartment without the code, and now he'll probably want to charge me a few hundred bucks for it. At this rate, I'm going to be broke again in a hurry. Hang on. We just got to wait for him to go, go away. Maybe steal the codes, I don't know. What a little shitter. You just see him peeking over this? Let's see if we can weasel our way out of this text. Yeah, that's fine. Nilo is up. What do you want? I'm busy here. Yeah, ask our money, money's worth. There's something I forgot to ask you. I figure I've paid you enough already, so you owe me. Well, you figured wrong. You're off by about 500 bucks. Oh, we're gonna have to plead for mercy. Come on, Nilo. You've cleaned me out already. I haven't even got enough money left to buy food. Oh, boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Here, let me give you some back. Ah, you didn't say the magic word. What a sap. So, uh, what do you want to know? How to spot a sucker a mile away? <laughs> sucker a mile away, I like that. That was pretty good. Oh, I nailed it, boys. We in. Nyla looks around like he's about to sell some government secret and then lets me take a peek in his special notebook. The code is 4827. <laughs> Remember when Ralph was getting robbed at the beginning? Well, he's getting robbed now. <laughs> yeah. Four eight two seven. Nice, thank God. We like, cause we we need money to pay off that fucking electronics bill. If nothing else, let me tell you. The electronics store was super crucial in the first, or the last game. That looks like shit. Oh god, we're gonna stand up Chelsea and she's gonna hate us. Also, I swear the fuck if he takes the rest of our money. We do get 500 bucks a day though. Plus expenses. 
My head feels like it's full of molasses. Yeah, another swell case for San Francisco's favorite punching bag. I suppose the fact that someone knocked me out must mean I'm on the right track. <sighs> Whoever hit me did a thorough job. Must have interrupted his search of the apartment. Maybe that means he overlooked something. Hey, we didn't get robbed. Oh, fucking hell. The, the, there's not enough shitty 3D graphics in this apartment. We moved too quick. Particle board and plastic never look so good. Looks like a letter. I wonder who this David Wright is. More importantly, if Malloy's been to his cabin in Oregon. January 28th of 2043. Dear Thomas, I was delighted to receive your letter after all these years. Oh, really? Sounds as though your work is progressing well. Oh, sorry, your work is progressing well. And I look forward to having a few of our all-night discussions just like the old days. You're certainly welcome to stay at my cabin as long as you'd like. It's extremely secluded, a perfect place to get away from frying eyes. I can meet you for at least... I can't meet you for at least a week, but I'll get there when I can. In the meantime, there's a key to the door under the brick by the front steps. I've come across an item I think you'll find interesting. I look forward to working out an exchange of information. The cabin is located exactly 8.4 miles SSW, so southwest, from a small town in Oregon called Salmonberry. Probably need to find a good map. Good to see you. Now there's no... Ah! This looks like a pawn ticket of some kind. Excellent. Looks like Rook did some business with Mr. Malloy. It's probably, yeah. Uh... I wonder if Rook could let me redeem this receipt. Who am I kidding? He'll do anything if the price is right. <laughs> probably a map or something, right? Reckon? Aha! Uh -huh. hmm, no play, bub. I never look at these personally, but I do remember this one. Was the Amazon Woman edition featuring 37 pages of full color pictures? Nice. So funny. Man, what's this? Looks like a scarf. Ooh, this scarf reeks a cheap perfume. I guess Malloy must have had a lady friend in for a visit. And if the lady friend wore this scarf anywhere else in the neighborhood, she'd be pretty hard to forget. Maybe I should show this thing around and see what I can find out. And poor Chelsea. He was just about to ask us something important. Like, can you find my dog or something? Look at all those drawers. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh? Yeah, it looks like a business card. This warehouse is just down the street from the Ritz. Nice Acme storage code. We'll store your junk. Good. What? Oh, what the balls? Oh, no. Why would someone play the game like this? Hang on. Good enough, I guess. Well, that won't. Uh -huh. yeah, it's an old photograph. Look at. Oh, fucker. Oh, you fucker. Oh. Reagan ages. Okay. Oh, no. oh my god. Whoa! Christ! Wait, can I do... Oh, I can do that. Well, that looks pretty... Wait, can I... Was it like that before? I don't even remember what it looked like before. I assume it's supposed to be Reagan age five, by the way. Oh yeah, I forgot about crouching. We are now about to cockroach. It's like we're playing bad mojo all over again. I don't remember how to stand up though. Uh-huh. Oh my god, we can stand very high. Excellent. Excellent! And what is this? There's like some weird clipping. I think it's just supposed to be the light. Where are these boxes from? Let's find out. 
These boxes are empty. I wonder what they're doing here. So that's a really small ch Open. The label on the box says it was shipped from Mexico. The label on the box... I know what the box label says, but what is this? Hmm. Airport of the Gods. My Uncle Marty owned a whole series of these books. Go-Karts of the Gods, Lunch of the Gods. I loved this book when I was a kid. Aliens, spaceships, mysterious structures. Then I grew up and realized it was all a load of crap. The, la the label on the box. I shudder to think about all the butts that have sat in that cushion through the ages. Damn. No spare change under here. Hmm. Looks like Malloy made a special llama pal back in his younger days. <laughs> what the fuck? Amazing. Okay. Well. Cam, we saw we learned some things. Tell me about the hot plate. An old rusty hot plate. The luxury of hotel living. Whoever furnished the Ritz must have bought credenzas in bulk. Anything in the uh, trash? No. Nice wastebasket. That's not too bad. Oh my god, we're taller than the fucking door now. Hang on, let me bring back down to a normal human level. Oh man, Chelsea's gonna kill me. Yeah. I didn't realize how long I was out. God, almost 16 hours. I was out cold straight through our dinner date. She is never gonna believe me. Yeah, Chelsea's actually gonna be mad, dude. Should Vidphone, uh. It's giving her whatever the fuck. I see that green line. Chelsea, I'm. Oh no, she's not there. Oh dear. Chelsea, are you, uh, you hiding? Alright, let's go. Like, Rook, we're gonna want to talk to. The electronics place we want to pay off our bill first. Before we lose all our money. Ah, uh, the electronics shop. I have to laugh every time I think about all the free stuff I picked up with my bogus electronics shop credit card. <laughs> yeah, about that. The electronic shop opened last year, and I got to know the previous owner, Ham Underwood. I got an electronic shop credit card under somewhat shady circumstances, and I ran up a good-sized bill during my last case. I hear there's a new owner now, some guy named Zach Williams. Oh god. <laughs> Hold it right there. Get your hands up where I can see them. All right. Now, take out your electronic shop credit card. Nice and easy. So you're Murphy. I just got your photo from the credit department. <laughs> we were wondering when you'd show up here again. I got orders about you. Straight from corporate headquarters. <sighs> Sorry I gotta do this. But... Now then, what can I do for you? <laughs> Just amazing. Uh, let's bring this up. Oh, use a terrible pun to break the ice. Yes. Tried to get the last laugh. Maybe. Or play innocent. 
terrible puns are definitely a Tex Murphy thing. But he does also like to play innocent. Uh, I kind of, I, you know what I mean? I kind of like the, uh, the the terrible pun. I just want to hear what it is. Well, I guess this means my credit's shot. Oh. You know, I'm almost certain I sent you people a payment. Really? I wonder why we haven't received it. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. Um... You gotta, you gotta give an elaborate explanation. That's a text thing. It's my accountant. He's got a little problem. And I'd fire him in a second. If it weren't for little Timmy. And his tragic medical problem. Your account is over 120 days delinquent. And you owe us... $1,230. Say what? That amount includes... One fax machine, $399. One laser blade, $29. A film developing kit, stole all this shit. $179. For that card. piece of crap, you bought it. And $623 in interest. What? $623 in interest. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to ask for the former owner, yeah. So where's Ham Underwood? He and I are old buddies. Look, I think I can make a deal with Ham. Ham Underwood doesn't work here anymore. In fact, I don't think he works anywhere anymore. I heard he opened his mouth just a little too wide and someone big shut it up for him. Permanently. Now pay me the $1,230 you owe me or get out. To the, you know, the standard customer threat. All right. But I hope you know that your insensitive behavior is forcing me to consider taking my business elsewhere. Sounds good to me. Until you pay off your account, you can't buy anything here anyway. Look! Well, is there anything we're going to need here? Hang on, let's look around. To Zoe watches. Last one I had broke down. Those headphones sound terrible with my Victrola. That sucker reminds me of the bill collector that dropped by my office a month ago. Oh, oh, what's this? This looks good. I used to have a battery pack like this for my Robco toys. This computer has way too many keys. Missile robot. I can't stand that toy ever since it killed my cat Fuzzy. Actually, that computer does have too many fucking keys. What the hell? Hmm. Taser. I had one of those once, but I kept zapping myself. <laughs> yeah, true. That is one old camera. I don't think they even make film for these anymore. Oh, we're gonna find film for that camera, I bet you. The Robco Combuster. Now that's interesting. Memo pad. Jeez. Are they still trying to sell these things? I haven't sold a single visor since I started shopping here. A relief globe of the moon. That might come in handy if I ever have to relieve myself on the moon. Oh dear. This spacecraft looks like the escape shuttle from the moon child. Uh, yeah, that's a reference to the first game. This is what we bought last time, I think. Force field keeps out undesirables. Yeah, it was great buying merchandise from this box until my credit was shot. I got one of these and it's a real beauty. I don't know, do we do we pay off our debt? I'm afraid my credit card for this slide box was uh, terminated. I'm not interested in Geigers. Little buggers eat till they explode. <laughs> yeah. I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah, that was also in the, or the, the previous game. I, I want to call it the first game because it's the first, in my opinion, real Tex Murphy game. But it isn't. That's what it feels like. It's the first FMV. Glorious. Shitty three. That door will take me back to beautiful Chandler Avenue. I feel like we're supposed to pay this, but... Looks like Rook. 
Let's uh, see what else we can get into first. These doors lead to the brew and stew. It's the only place in the neighborhood to get a decent meal. The brew and stew, Louis' diner, is more of a home to me than my place at the Ritz. Louis' probably my best friend if I have one. He's always making sure I get enough to eat, and he runs me tabs for months at a time. My current debt is up to 200 bucks. But with the smell of fresh coffee and Louis' special home cooking, the brew and stew always has the welcome sign turned on. Mife! I noticed you talking to that old gentleman last night. I bet Rook 20 bucks that he hired you to do some work for him. Well, I'm happy to report that Rook owes you 20 bucks. Though I'm sure he's going to be real happy about paying off the bet. I think Rook's only nice to members of the fairer sex. And not too many of them. So I was right. You did get a job. I love Louie. He's a great guy. <laughs> His fucking makeup's super fun. Uh, so I think we, I think we play... It's like Louie talks to everyone, so it's like if we give like a little summary, maybe he'll hear something. You know what I mean? Um, but I also don't want people knowing. Because uh, tracking down a person gets harder... Oh, pardon me, when people know you're tracking them down, right? So, um, what do you think? Play down, let's play down the case a bit, maybe. Yeah. The old guy hired me to feed his fish while he was on vacation. I start tomorrow. I'm pretty excited. You know, speaking of fish, you hungry? The special today is clownfish. I <laughs> don't eat it, won't eat it, candy. Oh, man. Ah, sorry. My doctor says I can't eat fish. My cholesterol's too low. You sure? Comes with a side of popcorn and a candy apple. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I would, but I just brushed my teeth, and I don't want to lose my minty, fresh breath. I don't blame you, Mife. Well, if you ain't hungry, you must be looking for something else. What can I do for you? Let us uh, offer from our inventory. Load of Malloy and Llama. Hmm. Looks like Malloy. Ah, uh, no thanks. Ah, uh, no thanks. Did you know the chilled? Ah, uh, no thanks. But the scarf, you seen this? Oh yeah, I remember this scarf. And the perfume on it, young, blonde guy. Well, it came in here a while ago. Ah, uh, no thanks. Uh, this is the guy that was with that young blonde girl mm. who was wearing the nice smelling scarf. Interesting. Should we, should we pay Louis back? He's a good guy. Let's do it. You're okay in my book, Mife. All right. I'm a good guy. Uh, that's the guy in the photo, right? I only saw him the one time. Mm. She was real pretty, though a little heavy on the makeup. I think she said her name was Emily. Emily. I don't know anything else about her. She took over the electronics shop when Ham left. I've been meaning to go introduce myself. I don't know who she is. This is the guy that was with that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've never heard that name. I saw him all a couple weeks ago when the cops came by to clean out Rusty's place. Yeah, he hasn't changed much, except around the waistline. Oh, yeah. I don't like to talk bad about people. 
So I got nothing to say about Nilo. I just saw him talking to you. That's about it. Ah, Rook's just an ordinary son of a gun, but believe it or not, he's pretty soft underneath. What are you asking about me for? I ain't nothing special. Oh, look at this little lug. Chelsea's the sweetest girl I've ever met. There's nothing I'd like more than to see you two together. You're okay in my book, Mife. No matter what anyone else says. Alright, well... Maybe we didn't learn a ton, but we learned a lot. <laughs> the slice of heaven's been vacant for months. During one of my previous cases, I did a job for the former owner, Francesca Lucido. It helped her get a divorce from her dirtbag husband, and she took him to the cleaners. Last I heard, she was dating some young stud named Julio and renting a condo in Miami Beach. I feel like that happened last case, actually. I think the electronics store is the last place we pay off. The slice of heaven's been. Oh, yeah, the alleyway. Can we get back in there still? Well, if I suck in my gut, I just might be able to get through the fence and get into the alley behind the pawn shop. There were some serious clues there last time. Although, that's also because there was a break in at the pawn shop. That door will take you in. Yeah, let's go. Let's say hi to Rook. Rook's been running his pawn shop since sometime before the Eisenhower administration. He's a crusty, mean spirited little troll who's rumored to have a heart of gold. Yeah, sure. He lets me buy things on credit occasionally, but then he nags me ruthlessly until I pay up. We get along all right, as long as I keep my bills settled. Up already, Murphy. And it isn't even lunchtime yet. Or am I still asleep? Having a horrible, horrible nightmare. Ah, uh, um... I think we should tell him our personal nightmare. You know what my nightmare is, Rook? <laughs> I don't know, maybe you can relate to this one. It's waking up 30 years older, a foot and a half shorter, and uh, dog ugly. Very funny. At least I've never had a problem getting a woman to go out with me. Speaking of which, how's Chelsea? <laughs> let's, uh... Oh, let's draw the line here, man. What Chelsea and I do, and how often we do it, is none of your business, is it? A bit sensitive, are we? But don't tell me things aren't going well for the two of you. <laughs> uh, gender-related confusion, maybe? Turn the tables? Well, right now, Rook and Louie and Chelsea are from the previous games. I don't know what it is, Rook. It's these women. They're harder to figure out than a tax return. What do you know about a tax return? Which reminds me, where's the money you owe me? Cup of the morning to you. Yeah, no, this guy's great. Uh, of course we're gonna fucking taunt this guy. Because Rook's fun to fuck with. That's right here in my pocket. Yes, sirree, my pocket's cram full of cash. <laughs> I could hardly walk over here. So, uh, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Play hard to get. <laughs> oh, buddy. I don't know. I kind of like the way it feels. I think I'll hold on oh, to it. Oh, he's going to have a stroke. Get lost, Murphy. Come back when you're ready to pay me. All right. Fuck. <laughs> it's fun to mess with him, though. All right, Murphy. Get out your wallet or get out of my shop. All right, all right, all right. Here's, here's your money. Let's um, let's start showing him just random crap from inventory. Hmm. Looks like. Oh fuck it, balls. 
I don't want that. I know. I don't. I. I don't. I need to redeem this receipt. You didn't pawn this. Well, how much is it? Look, I'm willing to pay extra. Two hundred dollars. Yep, plus fifty dollars for it not being your receipt. Hmm. We're gonna start running out of cash soon. What do you think this was? I mean, it's our only lead right now. I'm gonna pay him. Well, I hope my new purchase will help me out. A black dagger. I. I don't want. I've seen this man before. He came into my pawn shop several weeks ago and pawned an item. If you want to find out what he pawned, I suggest you find him and ask him. Well, now we can't pay for our uh, electronics bill. <laughs> Fuck. I thought that was that was going to be like the end of the game if we did that. Uh, all right, let's ask about some stuff. Uh, that's the name of the man in the photo? He only came in here once. How should I know who that is? I'm trying. He uh, took over the electronic shop after the fat man left. It, it seems pleasant enough. Yeah. Never heard the name in my life. I've seen this man before. That's the name of the man whose pawn receipt you brought in. Yes. No. I don't know if... Nylor's run the Ritz for years. He's a pig. But at least he pays cash when he buys something from me. Never had... You know... Louis's a good man. He seems to like you quite a bit. I can't figure out for the life of me why. He doesn't know anyone named Sandra? Well, you have to remember, Fox, so... I mean, that is, that is a funny thing, but... We we're in like the dregs of society. Pretty much everyone nearby is a mutant. So maybe they just don't have names like Sandra when you're a mutant. You have names like Rook and Louie. Oh, Chelsea. If I were a younger man, you wouldn't have a chance with her. Now I'll admit you have some skills as a PI. It's your social skills that need desperate help. Okay, rude. Uh, let's go check out the alley behind. I don't imagine there'll be anything. Oh, let us play basketball again. I used to play basketball two or three times a day when I was younger. Now, after I watch Jeopardy, I need a nap. Uh, in the first game, you got a cutscene where you played. Oh, holy shit! Hey, kids, don't let Llama Claus down. Start smoking his cigs before he hits the town. <laughs> I need this in my <laughs> Fuck. I need this in my life. A billboard for llama cigarettes featuring llama claws. Can't believe how much money these big corporations waste on stupid advertising. Man, I could sure use a smoke. Dude, I love that. That's crazy good. I'm a sucker for... Well, not really. I mean... Oh, here was another thing, too. In the previous game, one of these fucking waste bins had something in it. A clue. I have to admit, Rook has an enviable collection of trash cans. But yeah, I've like, I, I, you know, I, I did studying in like advertising and design in school. I'm not really interested in. I don't, I don't fall for it, but, well, you know, not as much I'm aware. But <laughs> whatever's on the end it. of this power box must be out of commission. This gauge is as dead as my love life. I want my. 3D TV. That's a manhole cover. A sewer line must run under the alley. I don't remember that last time. Aha! Uh -huh. That could be... We're not going in there right now. That sounds like there's fucking sonar in there. Oh, remember the guy that lived in the dumpster in the last game? Ah, Clint's old studio apartment. I wonder if it's for rent. 
see it there right now, though. It seems like there's nothing too crazy out here, but again, last time we investigated like a robbery. Yeah, the fire escaped in nowhere. Mm, that's cool too. I wanna check that sewer out. Oh yeah, it actually doesn't go anywhere. Sure looks like this door's painted on. Find like some paint remover. It's funny how slow we move now because we're not inside. Oh fuck! Never mind. It just kicked. Oh my god! It kicked in the turbo. There we go. Yeah, I want to climb the ladder. Ladder check. Contaminated area. Eh? Fuck it. Danger. Contaminated area. <laughs> no contamination around here. Oh, this doesn't... What is that? Oh, great. Another empty box. Wasn't anyone in charge of removing these things? No. Oh, what's that thing? This looks like the kind of money belt the drug dealers are wearing these days. I think I could put this money to a more productive use than any drug dealer could. Brave D. I love how it's just a fanny pack. That's great. How much money did we find? Uh, okay, we have enough to pay off our electronics bill now. Dry is peeled for useful shit. Okay, game. Up there. Is this gonna be a fucking maze? There's definitely something there, though. Let's see the pixels. Nice more play bub. Oh, play bub. Oh, gross. This magazine is filthy. I'll never get all the sewage off it. <laughs> I hope R&D doesn't flush, eh, Fox? Looks like a cave-in has this area blocked up. How appropriate. Maybe we do have to pay off the uh, electronics building. Uh, like we got enough money for it. Ooh, where does this go? Looks like nowhere. Go somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. It's all locked up. This, this is Rusty's warehouse, right? I guess they have to keep this door locked now that people are storing their stuff here. Oh no, this is Acme. Acme warehouse. That's where we found, uh... Today, behind the Golden Gate Hotel, the glories of a vegetarian diamond diet. A sermon by Reverend Gary. A sermon on the joys of not eating meat. To be delivered by Reverend Gary. Okay. Hey, who's Reverend Gary? I don't recognize him. Fuchsia Flamingo. Oh, where's our friend, uh, Burnface Man? This place has been locked up for months. You guys remember him? He was obsessed with fucking Rusty the Clown. I right, don't miss Lucius Lucy. Luscious Lucy Love. Uh, the Fuchsia Flamingo certainly has the nicest doors on the street. Chelsea's not back yet. This should be locked up because there was a murder here in the previous game. Looks like the cops put one of their computerized locks on the door. Rusty's front door is sealed off with a cop lock. There's no way I can get in without unlocking it. Off lock, that's fun. Sticks out to me. This mailbox used to be located by the Slice of Heaven. Federal discrimination laws require that it be moved to a new location on the first of every month. Oh my god, why'd the game just randomly speed up? The vegetarian diet, so I assume that Reverend's gonna come into play. Clint's Coco Cabana? Has Clint got out of the dumpster? 
started doing stuff? Over to Fuchsia Flamingo. Over gate to back door between 8 a.m. and 12 noon. This gate leads to an alley behind the Ritz in the Flamingo. Interesting. This is how we get to our, uh, our fire escape, I assume, then. Yeah. So that's our office right there. Dumpster smells like a compost pile. Only worse. What's that? Looks like Looks like a metal rod. Maybe an antenna. Give me, give me it. This antenna isn't busted. I might be able to extend it. There we go. Okay. No shortage of trash receptacles in this part of town. Looks like this side of the Fuchsia Flamingo didn't get painted. You can still see all the old markings from when it was the Bijou Theater. And it's all locked up. Yeah, reasonable. That might be something we have to check out later, though. Coco Cabana was just opened by a reformed bum named Clint. Yeah, Clint was pretty I good. I met him during my last case when he was living in a dumpster in an alley behind Rook's Pawn Shop. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's compliment the rug. Come on. Be nice, this guy. You know, Clint, some men, they just can't wear a toupee. But it looks pretty good on you. Yeah, and that's what your mom told me, right before I slapped the handcuffs on her, like I do every Saturday night. Nice. Uh, try to make the conversation friendly. Okay, well I can tell you're just in one of your moods. How about serving me up a nice vanilla frogurt? Ah, vanilla's for pansies. The only thing I serve here is pure creamy chocolate. And if that's too strong for you, then I get lost. Order for pay. Let's give him a little known scientific fact. You know, I heard that eating excessive amounts of chocolates can result in hallucinations. Yeah, and at the moment I'm having a vision of a PI being bludgeoned to death with a blender. Jesus, Clint. Come on, let's, uh, let's sympathize here. Yeah, it's bad, isn't it? When my grandma was strung out on Demerol, she used to see dancing monkeys. Ha-ha! You're a real comedian. So why don't you come a little bit closer and I'll try out a few of my punchlines on you. <laughs> come on, man. We gotta cash in an old favor. Look, buddy. You owe me. Remember last December? Who eased your pain when you ran out of chocolate syrup? Who's the one who found you the piece of Louie's award-winning chocolate pie? Who? Me, that's who. Fine! You do me one favor! And you expect me to kiss up for the rest of my life? Yes. All right, what do you want? Yeah, he was literally sitting in the dumpster just chugging chocolate syrup. It was his addiction. He helped. Now, what do you know about this shit? So this is the item Malloy Pond. I'm no expert, but this thing looks pretty ancient. What do you think about this, Lou? Well, look, I appreciate the gesture, but uh, no thanks. Well, look, I appreciate... No, look. No, look. No, look. I. No, look. I appreciate. Oh. I've seen this scarf before. A girl came by here wearing it. Very good. Very good. No. No, look. I appreciate. Hey, we're not. we not. He doesn't get any of our money. Nope. Drawing a complete blank. Did you know that there's some kind of secret door that comes out of Rusty's fun house over by the warehouse? I saw the cops open it when they were there last week. Oh yeah, I think we took that to find the murderer. It's a warehouse. What do you want me to say? No, oh, that's reasonable. Emily? 
Yeah, you must be talking about the girl oh. who sings at the flamingo. She's come by here a couple times with a gigantic guy named Gus Leach. Okay. He's that new guy running the electronic shop. Oh, I wish I could help you. Can't say I've heard of it. Oh, I wish I could help you. Totally unfamiliar to me. Now, this scarf belongs to Emily. Mmm. Love that perfume. Smells almost as good as fresh chocolate. Nilo, an open sore on the face of humanity. At one point, I had to choose between living at the Ritz and living in the dumpster. I took the lesser evil. Oh, I wish I could help you. That blood-sucking tightwad, he wanted me to pay rent for living in the dumpster outside of his pawn shop. <laughs> yeah, I love Rook. That guy's a real gem. Hell of a cook. Oh. Chelsea's a nice girl. But whatever happened between us was over long ago. Don't let the torch she still carries for me stand in your way. All right. You brought me a chocolate pie when I was on the skids. I'm indebted to you for the rest of my life. You're a god. Happy? Hey, that felt pretty good, actually. Yeah, thanks. Oh, okay, so now we know we got to get in the Flamingua. The future. Oh, is it not open right now, maybe? I guess while we still have cash, we could pay our electronics to. Uh, sucks, but it might be the right thing to do. You know? At least we got someone else we can talk to about stuff. Ah, Mr. Murphy. Have you decided to pay off your bill? Yes. All right, all right. Here's your money. Now when do I get my new credit card? You don't. From now on it's cash only. If you see something you like, ask me about it. And I'll give you a price. Fair enough. Um, how much is the camera? Like that. That is one. I'm here to answer questions about the merchandise, and that's all. If you see something you're interested in, ask me about it, and I'll give you a price. Then if you want to buy it, you give me the cash, and you take it with you. Got it? Good. <laughs> I'm like, eh, I guess so. Ask about... The Canon Hyper Zoom is our most popular model of camera, $759. Our vid phone prices are very competitive, $399 not including installation. I already have one of those. The Topo Globe runs for $479. The visors don't work, so we're selling them cheap, 10 bucks each. Those are tasers. They're a joy buzzer for the 21st century. Kids love them, $33 a piece. Mm, that's not bad. The Robco Supercomputer. It's our top of the line. $5,999. The video watches are priced pretty low. 15 bucks. The teeny laser disc never caught on, so these things aren't much good. That might be something I have to buy. I wouldn't worry about the miscellaneous items unless, of course, someone suckered you into buying a Robco computer. <laughs> nice. Oh my god, nice. That's good. The remote control Geiger is a favorite of mine. All the fun and none of the mess. $799. The Robco Colony Cruiser is every kid's dream toy. That's why it'll cost you 900 big ones. 
The Cyber Nanny is a real breakthrough in the field of child supervision. $1,259. The headphones are scientifically designed to work with almost any portable disc player. That kind of compatibility doesn't come cheap. $150. Bucks. The headphones. This new rodent tracker has some features that weren't in the 8000 model. It's got a strafing feature for cockroaches and a butane ant torch. Great. It's a little pricey. $899. Ah, the Robco Combuster. If you need to find out a safe combination, this is the gadget for you. Attach it to the service of a safe, then turn the dial. It'll show you all the numbers in the combination. The only glitch is that it doesn't give you the exact order the numbers are used in. It's still a bargain at 50 bucks. I feel like we need that. The we'll Robco battery, battery pack, pack is specially designed to be used with certain Robco products, such as the Alien Abductor, which I happen to be out of at the moment. It's 20 bucks for the battery pack. Okay, I feel like we need to buy the combustor and the pack. But, we're not going to buy it until we know we need it. Um, that's good, though. I, I'm glad we paid off our debt. Definitely going to have to do that. Okay. This is close to... Let's take one more look for Chelsea. And then I think we're going to have to call... Um... No. Call our guy. I love the fact that the fire escape is the way into our office. Great. Headphone, please. Hello, Mr. Murphy. How goes the investigation? Yeah, well, we've... <laughs> it's coming along, but I still need to get a few more details from you. It's some trouble. Please, please, I am at your disposal. This guy's a great actor. Um, Emily. Sorry. Unless it's related to finding Dr. Malone. Well, it could, it could be. I don't know. That's um, the name. Really? Okay, so I, I can't show him any of our items over the phone. Which is unfortunate. I wanted to show him, like, the... Um, I'm gonna show him like the photograph of the llama, see if you recognize the guy, you know? Which of course he would, but what if he didn't? It'd be a little sketchy. We have to get a meeting with Mr. Gus Leach. Or, um, of course, the lady. I wonder if Louie knows about him. How's your case coming along? Anything I can do to help? Yes, you may. The footprints on the floor? Um, so, Tex's office used to be a dance studio before he been. He's never got the, the, the footprints off. Leech is the guy who opened the club. Big fella. Got a real hearty appetite. Okay, so he doesn't even know her name. He does know the club. That warehouse changes owners like partners at a square dance. I guess it's some kind of storage unit now. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, that's what we're doing. The comps came in and closed that place down a couple weeks ago. Turns out they found Rusty's body in there. Someone dumped him in a barrel of acid. Created a lot of conversation in here, I tell ya. Yeah, we, uh, we cracked that case, actually. It was also in the previous game. 
So we need the safe cracker, I assume. And we need to use it to get in the rusties, which will get us in the warehouse. Where um, it's possible fits or uh, sorry. Thomas Malloy? Whatever. It's possible Malloy has hidden some stuff there. Because he had the, the Acme card. Hey. I'm just not sure this is going to work. On the uh, thing. Well, I hope my new purchase will help me out. Yeah, see, I'm not sure it will, but... Let's go try it. That doesn't seem to... Really, it doesn't work. Rusty's front. Rusty's front. Look. Really? That's shitty. It's because it's out of battery or something? It's anything, eh? Hmm. Well, I think we'll leave it here. We're not going to save then, because. We might not need this, we might have wasted the money. <laughs> but we will leave it here. And I will take off for the night. It's getting a little late. Uh, so hopefully you all had a good time. Got back in the adventure games, which is nice. We'll probably rotate this in while we're playing other stuff. But yeah, take it easy, guys. And I will see you tomorrow, as always.